Welcome back to the podcast. In this episode, I speak with Andy Lerling, who is the founding partner of Lumo Labs. Lumo Labs is an investment firm who invests in pre-seed and Series A companies, normally within the XR industry, blockchain, AI, and data. In the episode, me and Andy talk about what makes a good founder, what makes a good startup, and the reason that he invests in impact-driven startups. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Uh, ask you a little bit about how your visit to Helsinki was in uh, the Lush Festival. Uh, well, conference, not festival. How, uh, how was it? Uh, it was a very intense and uh, hectic few days, I have to say. Uh, um, I, I sometimes got the feeling that uh, uh, with uh, the big badge you have with uh, a separate color and very big investor on it, uh, you're a bit of a prey for all the startups. <laughs> <laughs> um, so walking from A to B, I learned to turn uh, my badge around. Uh, but then everybody uh, who was investing did that. So in the end, everybody knew yeah. <laughs> that you were an investor. Uh, now, a very, very hectic day, uh, days um, with a lot of good things. Uh, I spoke with uh, um, pretty interesting uh, LPs uh, because we are fundraising uh, again for our new fund um, with fellow investors, colleague investors, uh, also discussing joint uh, deal opportunities uh, and learning more from each other uh, yeah. and also discussed um, uh, and had talks with, uh, with I think over 100 startups and, wow. and that's, uh, uh, you really have to think about three questions and then you have to decide okay listen this is within our focus or not within our focus potentially interesting or not potentially yeah. interesting well just just out of curiosity um are you, are you allowed to share what those three questions are? Because they might be interesting for uh, potential founders or yeah. Yeah, potential startups listening. Okay. Uh, well, the first one is always to check uh, if it's within our investment focus. Um, yeah, so uh, what, do you, what technology do you use and uh, what industry are you active in? Uh, second is always what, what problem do you solve? Uh, and the third one is team. Uh, and, and based on that, I then decide, okay, uh, either send the deck or, uh, or I, I'm be quite, uh, frank always like, okay, this is without, uh, outside our focus or, or, um, this is, uh, well, we are doing typically the first ticket, but sometimes it's even too early for us. Mm. Uh, cause, cause you guys are mainly, uh, pre-seed and series A, right? Uh, pre-seed, seed and series A. Yeah. 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 Okay, interesting. And just out of curiosity, did you have any interesting startups there? Were there some things you were really had your had your eye on to like before you went? Were there things you had your eye on, or were you quite surprised when you got there? Uh, both. We did. We did uh, because on, on on the Slush app, you can find more or less all the all the startups that, that are there. So the analysts uh, looked at it. So and I, I got like a top ten list to talk with, um, but still. Like uh, I met like uh, two uh, on side events, two startups uh, that I thought like, okay, this is pretty interesting uh, for our next fund. Uh, uh, but but still, uh, very very much so that that uh, during serendipity uh, is very important during those events. I would say yeah. um, because before you can you can uh, follow up already through the app, of course. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, uh, I have to say that that uh, uh, yeah, that I can imagine that free yeah, free investments would follow from 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 Slush in the next half a year. Oh. Um, and of course, we had uh, three of our own uh, portfolio companies also there, uh, of which one we uh, just uh, announced investment, uh, Hudo AI. Uh, yeah, Hulo, they yeah. got a lot of they got a lot of attention there. Was uh, unbelievable. Yeah, um, with Hulo AI, can you explain um, what what was the main thing that drew you towards that company? Then, what was what, was it there? Because I know you're very impact, you're impact focused, and and that's one of your main like your core three, right? Um, what really drew you to those guys, and in particular? Um, 
well, we one of the things we do is market research. Uh, what what is the world in need of? Uh, what are big problems? And 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 uh, we know that one of uh, the problems is that that the quality of the pipe uh, the pipes of the, the the drinking water are very poor uh, in in most cities in most areas actually most countries. Um, it's very expensive to replace them, uh, not only to break open uh, streets, uh, but then also all the uh, economical damage because of uh, streets being open. Yeah. Um, and uh, on the other hand, the United Nations uh, have written reports uh, that by 2025, 50%, we cannot imagine it here maybe, but 50% of people on planet Earth uh, will experience some form of scarcity of water. Um, so so uh, some say water is the new gold. Mm. Uh, and and uh, Hulo came up with a solution that very accurately they can uh, define early uh, water leakage and... and uh, they can also determine uh, more or less where the leakage would, would be. Uh, For them, the repairs, it makes it much easier to find the, find exactly. the cause of the problem. So the the, the cost direct. savings are there. It can be faster. It can be... So, so for us, it was like, uh, and because we invest amongst others in uh, sustainable cities um, and, of course, AI, uh, it, it, it was a very interesting proposition where we believe in that it can be grow uh, very... Uh, uh, very uh, to a very large uh, corporate, um, and it, it's a good venture case. Plus, it gives positive impact. Cool. And just just a quick one because I I know like well I know a little bit about you as the investor, um, and that's kind of what I want to stick to talking about because I think a lot of the founders who listen to the podcast will find it quite interesting on how you guys. Uh, go about things and, and what you look for and maybe the things that are good and bad and the ugly. Um, but how did you get into the position you're currently in today? So what is your, what is your background predominantly in? Um, and yeah, how did you get to becoming an investor? Because I think a lot of founders uh, want to get to that point, you know, a little bit later in their career after, you know, starting up a few com companies. I think everyone dreams to be an investor uh, in, in startups. So how did you, how did you get there? Uh, well, I'm, I'm a so-called entrepreneur, gold investor, uh, joint investor, sorry. Uh, and um, which I think is a big advantage, especially in the pre-seed and seed phase, because you can relate more to, to the startups. Uh, you know yeah. how it feels. Um, I originally started uh, at uh, PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, for a period of three years, which uh, was really good to have that experience in my opinion because uh, you get to know the, the the corporate experience and uh and the politics uh amongst others <laughs> which are happening um and you get a very good base um but but i also had to be honest to myself that it was not for me i, I needed more freedom uh, yeah and, and based uh, uh from uh, pwc i was headed to a company uh, which just uh, received a Series A back then uh, to set up uh, the first the project management, afterwards the commercial uh, commercial management uh, turned into commercial manager, uh, and then I was asked uh, by some entrepreneurs to join them. Uh, that's where I really got, I guess, the entrepreneurial uh, spirit. Uh, after that, founded my own. I, I do it very quickly now, eh, because you want to yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. investment. Of course. Uh, then I had the opportunity to uh, to pick up uh, an, an IP, build a company around it. Got the first one hundred thousand from the European Space Agency, uh, six million from a German investor, uh, and then I built it out to a company uh, that was sold two thousand eleven, uh, and since ever since I've uh, been helping. Uh, together with my business partner Sven Bakkers, um, startups uh, first uh, with coaching, uh, and at one point uh, also by paying in some angel tickets. And from the angel tickets, we decided, hey, why don't we do this professionally? Uh, because we love it, uh, and we started uh, the the Lumo Fund. Yeah, cool, cool. And so let's let's touch. You skipped over the uh, the bit the big the big business there, but so. 
tell me a little bit more about that because that's quite interesting for for people to listen and hear about. What were some of like the I don't know the the biggest reasons that business was a success um, in your opinion? Was it because some people talk about timing, they talk about investment, they talk about all the different stuff. But in your opinion, what made that business the success it was? Um, I, I think it's a few things. Yeah. It's, 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 you have internal factors, external factors. Yeah. And external factors uh, and internal uh, together is timing, I would say. Um, looking at the, the internal factors, it's really important to, to set clear goals. Yeah? So envision your exit. Uh, and then re-engineer back where am I today and what steps do I need to take to, to get there. Um, I think that's, that's a very important uh, one. So set clear goals and have feedback loops that you say, are we still on track? Um, uh, where you have to avoid the mistake to overthink it because you need to take steps. Yeah? Step by step, you get you reach your end goal. Uh, and if you only ask in your head, it's, nothing happens. Um, and, and, and don't be afraid because, uh, we are talking, it's, it's always a decision tree, you know, like, like, uh, if you make two steps, uh, too many to the left, uh, you can always take two steps back to the right and you're on track again. Yeah. Uh, it's not one step from, from point A to, to, to B it's many small steps. So you can adjust at every single moment and it's better to take the pace and especially Today, if you are in, uh, having an AI startup, make sure that you have a high pace. Don't overthink too much. Don't go for too many data points. Uh, just step by step, take 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 uh, the decisions, and then determine: Hey, do I go a bit more to the left, a bit more to the right to stay on course? Um, I think another thing is is really important, and and uh, knowing it right now in hindsight. Uh, I didn't use it enough, is, is ask for help. You will be surprised how many people are willing to help you. And you think uh, as an entrepreneur, you have to do it all by yourself. No, that's not true. You have like uh, experienced people uh, that, that are willing to give. And some are so uh, important, uh, they maybe even are good for your advisory board. Where on the other hand, of course, it's, it's very important that you take in the advices but you have to form your own opinion yeah. uh, on it and then go ahead uh, again. Uh, so how, just, just to jump in on that one, yeah. how, how do you decipher what is good and bad advice? Because that's something I found very difficult on whenever I've started something new on. I feel like a lot of people want to offer advice. Um, and what kind of framework do you then use to basically judge what is good advice and what is bad advice? Um, well, a few things. Who, who says it? Who gives the advice? Uh, like, have they been there and done it kind of thing? Have, have they been there? Have they done it? Are they considered experts in the field by other people? Uh, um, do they understand my full story? And do they give me advice for the now or do they give me advice for the future? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's always, always good to ask. Yeah? <laughs> uh, and have a conversation about it. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, to, and 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 ask your peers, like, hey, uh, what 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 what's your experience? And based on that, you can give a multiple to to the advice uh, you are raising, of which you are receiving, and 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 taking it from there. Um, so it's 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 a mixture of of, of things. And were there. Were there people already in your network that you could turn to for that? Or did you have to um, go out? I think mentors is like a, a word that's um, a lot. Did, was there somebody that really pushed you in that direction? I, I, I had a view where, few where I uh, realized only later on that they, they were because, because uh, initially you are totally uh, in a tunnel vision, which is very common for entrepreneurs but um, it's not the best <laughs> mm. um, and it's not really fair because uh, I've been growing older I met so many more people's uh, people uh, that my network is now so large that, yeah. that I, I cannot compare it anymore <laughs> with, with back back then uh, um, I, I could have asked for more help let's put yeah. it that way yeah. okay interesting yeah 
Because that's sometimes a, a difficult one for people to get their heads around. Is like, who do I ask for help? But that's a, I think if you've got a good framework of like, have they been there, done it? Have they even brought somebody like me with yeah. the same business to that level? Then they're probably a, a good yeah, fit. And, and, and nowadays with all the experience, uh, I sound really old now, uh, <laughs> I, I can very easily judge uh, and, and it goes more or less by itself. Yeah. Uh, it, it, how, how, how strong I need to listen to that advice. Mm. Uh, so it's it's so much harder when you're young and 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 you're just start working more or less to 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 determine that. So I I, I think partly it, it is about uh, trusting people for ninety five percent and and stay five percent sharp on what could be wrong advice. Mm -hmm. uh, so don't don't be too naive in it. Uh, um, why is somebody giving advice? Eh? Is it uh, because they want to sell consultancy hours? You know, then, then yeah. immediately like the multiple goes down. If it's somebody who ha had an exit and just enjoys life and, 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 and uh, believes that uh, everybody deserves success who even tries, then the multiple goes up. Uh, so you need to get the notes for it. I would say. Yeah. So we, we were, before I jumped in, we were talking about uh, internal and external factors then that were kind of, yeah, paramount to the success of that business. Let's talk about the external factors then, because we talked a, lot, a bit about the internal ones. Mm -hmm. what, what would be the external factors that made that business a success in your opinion? Um, yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm a tech entrepreneur, so I have to stick to tech because yeah. uh, other things I don't know anything about. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh where is the technology how innovative is it eh? you have to, like the the gardener curve and all kinds of other supporting tools uh to that um like how far are you off of of an of, of an technology that can be used in a broader way by more people uh when do you connect the early majority those are all like very um good tools to support you on in am i too early uh am i too late because sometimes you <laughs> you can also be too late eh, that the market's full uh but often you see that people are too early because there's just not a market uh for jet um and then it is what what does your competition do uh who, who are there that either do what i do or or uh having replacement uh, uh technology or product um mm. and 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 how far are they along if they already have like 100 million investment uh and, and 20 million annual uh, revenue yeah ooh, will you keep up with them or yeah. uh, well most likely not uh, unless that you are like uh, one of the few unicorns uh, i would say uh then, then, then maybe. Um, so it's it's it, it, it is hard, but it's, you need to constantly really, and I would really advise that to uh, every startup on quarterly basis scan the market you are in, uh, and 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 we see that as investors now. That's also again in hindsight, and um, we have quite often founders. Uh, approaching and saying, hey, we have something unique here. We can't find anything else in the market, but uh, within three months, we see two, three similar propositions. Mm. They are all stealth, so I can understand that they don't find it, but yeah. they are there already. And then we have to look who's the winner. Yeah, what, what are the propositions? Who's the team? What's the network? Which relations do they have? Mm -hmm. uh, how do how do they have the internal organization? So in, I, I would say uh, the market is very uh, important. Uh, network is very important. I cannot emphasize that enough. Uh, and that's definitely also in the Netherlands. I see um, something that can be improved. If I'm in California, you have every evening an event and you see all those startups mingle and and talk with each other so they are aware of each other and they help each other to a certain mm. extent they also try to kill each other on others <laughs> <laughs> um, but here we in, in in europe and especially also in the netherlands what you see is that that people tend to have that tunnel vision and stay inside until the product is there and then go out um, 
and they don't have a network yet. And they say, hey, I, I built this beautiful product. Now I have to start sales. No, start that sales already when you have the concept. Uh, and maybe not to the end client, but to, to potential partners, uh, potential investors. And, and wise men told me, uh, Andy, it's, 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 it's not hunting, it's harvesting. And harvesting means that you have to spend time on it. Uh, hunting is something different. Yeah. And then why do you think that is in the Netherlands then? Because obviously the, uh, in America, it's very different in many, 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 many regards, uh, especially Silicon Valley. That's its own. It's almost like a different universe over there for people exactly. that haven't been. Why, why is the Netherlands so much different in that respect, do you think? Um, Being a Dutch buyer and in it, you know, like, <laughs> but why, why, is, why do you think it is that? Is it just a personality? Um, I think it's culturally, yeah. yeah so culturally. Uh, um, you better act normal, otherwise uh, <laughs> you get a lot of negative attention uh, or yeah. people think uh, you're arrogant or uh, they, they don't, uh, um, yeah, they don't like you to stand out in that sense. Yeah? We, we, yeah. we are the, the, the people that needs to be on a plain level. Yeah. Um, and that's how we are born, born and raised. Uh, so that's, that's, that's another, uh, that's, that's one thing. Uh, um, if you look at America, it's all about standing out. Uh, so that's from from the earliest uh, um, school class, and then day one in school, uh, you are there like uh, taught to be standing out. Yeah, and here yeah. it's like fit in. Say, yeah? in America, it's who can shout the loudest and who can stand out the most, and it's the same in the UK as well. Like we're very much like the Dutch, where it's like. We call it tall poppy syndrome. So if mm -hmm. you know the tallest poppy that stands up the first exactly. time has its head cut off, basically. Yeah. You 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 put it better than I do, uh, but I I, <laughs> I fully <laughs> I fully agree, um, and that's what we often see eh, that 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 the technology is better here, but the total marketing and the money yeah is all over there is all over there with inferior technology, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but they are still the winner, you know. Yeah. And you guys have a presence out in Silicon Valley as well, right? I saw that on your LinkedIn that you guys. In, in LA, in Los Angeles. LA, sorry. Yeah. Silicon yeah. Beach. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's, what's, what's the, is, is that like a strategic idea then? Because there obviously is some good technology over there or is it m more for partners and things like that? Yeah. If you, if you look at, at what we invest in, eh? so AI, data, blockchain, IoT, VR, AR, digital security, then uh, very soon after we onboard portfolio companies, uh, they are in contact with with uh, the big uh, ones. Yeah. Um, and by having an, a location there, having feet on the ground, uh, as being Lumo, um, also the Lumo portfolio companies uh, immediately have feet on the ground, and we have two people there that represent um, the, the the portfolio companies. Mm. Um, and, and give a soft landing. Uh, so, so strategically that works very well. Um, and, and, um, it makes also sure that we are on track of the latest, uh, of the latest, uh, what's happening in the world. Uh, yeah. uh, and that takes in also into account what do we have to invest in what's going on there. Yeah. And do you, and with your investments, does that mainly stick then within just, um, the Netherlands and the USA or do you guys. Uh, are you open all over the world kind of thing? No, we, we invest in Europe uh, with the primary uh, region, focused region in the Netherlands, Belgium, Germany. Yeah. Uh, secondary focus, Nordics, Baltics, uh, Spain, Portugal. Uh, and then, as we call it, we have also uh, opportunity deals uh, in other countries within Europe. Um, we don't invest in America. Uh, but it's more a strategic satellite office to, to, to make the jump to America for the portfolio companies. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so the focus is on Europe. Okay. Understood. And was that because, uh, the language, well, obviously you guys speak English, so if it was in America, it wouldn't matter, but what was the main reason then for sticking in that geographical location? Is that because you see that's where the most technology is, or is that where you guys have the most expertise? Um, well, we, we have, uh, we do three things. We invest and then we have a, a, a Lumo program as we call it. 
and we help set up ecosystems. Well, uh, helping uh, setting up ecosystems in the US is not uh, necessary because they are uh, better at that as we, and more or less, I, I learned it there to, to apply yeah. it here. Yeah. Um, and, and, the, and the program uh, is, is tailor-made uh, where we on a quarterly basis sit with our portfolio companies. Um, um, and it's based on four pillars, excellent leadership, uh, storytelling, product market fit, um, and also follow-on investment. Um, it's just easier to do that in, in, in regional context in that sense. Uh, plus, we have some investors, LPs in our fund that prefer us to uh, invest in, in, in this region. Cool. And so when you invest in a company, what was the next step then? Because I guess you want to uh, hold their hand a little bit, help them. What is kind of the, the next step? Do you run... I don't know. Do you, yeah, tell me how that looks because I'm, I, I would just pluck things out of the air, what I think I would do. But what do you actually do with the founder and the company uh, straight away? Or is it just you sit back and say, yeah, well done, good luck? No, of course not. not the, none, none of the VCs will do that. Do that huh? So, so <laughs> there's always monthly re <laughs> reports. Now, what, what uh, we have gathered um, venture advisors around us and, and uh, 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 together with them, we, we cover all the topics uh, of technology uh, we invest in, uh, but also all the, all the uh, like uh, knowledge you need to have to run a business, eh? from finance to HR to operational to processes to product development, product market, and I can sales, I can continue marketing, um, and and more or less together with uh, the founders, we develop a plan. Uh, on a quarterly basis, like, okay, what will you be focusing on? How can we help you? Yeah. Mm. Uh, and, and more and more, we will also get to know uh, the founders. So we then uh, ask uh, at one point, what will you be focusing on in the uh, next three months? How can we uh, help you? But we also will say, what did we notice? Yeah. Because every founder, everybody has blind spots, even I. You know, well, <laughs> among <laughs> of all people, I. <laughs> uh, um, and 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 then it's just uh, taking such a topic and we involve then the particular uh, uh, venture advisor linked to such a topic uh, to have coaching sessions with the, the founders uh, to start raising awareness because typically founders don't need specialists, don't need to be specialists, they need to be generalists. Mm. Um, and as we invest in, in tech companies, uh, most of the founders are in our fund uh, are engineers, so they lack uh, some training on other elements yeah. where we then can help them not to become specialists, but to make sure that they have enough knowledge yeah, to raise awareness uh, and have some uh, initial knowledge that they can communicate with the specialists in that field. Yeah. And, uh, and in the end, we are investing in companies to grow companies. They need to be venture cases. That means that they hire, have to hire people. And by having that awareness, uh, as, as a journalist, they can hopefully hire a good specialist that have more knowledge, but is, that they are still a good communication partner. Yeah, yeah. That, and what do you find that most engineers uh, struggle with then? Is it, because I find whenever I deal with engineers in startups and I meet founders, Sometimes I'm going to generalize here. So if there's any engineers listening, I do apologize. But uh, I think that sales seems to be one of the hardest things uh, techie people struggle to do. Have you found that as well, that the sales side um, is the thing they struggle with the most? Uh, you have exceptions, but yes. Uh, and it's not a surprise to me that you say this. <laughs> um, so I would say marketing and sales. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. definitely. Um, where we do see that it is very beneficial if, if the founders can do initial sales and, and create initial traction. Yeah. Uh, and that they, at least one of the founders uh, is a bit more extrovert, uh, open to, to start working on that network, uh, yeah. which I just mentioned is very important. Um, but we, see, we do see that that's really a difficult thing. That's also where we help with, with the Loom program and with the gray hair. Um, that you have some uh, good uh, 
well, I, we know a lot of people and, and we are, um, it, when we believe they are ready, we open up doors uh, that will stay closed for, typically for, for startups. And that's, that's very unfair, but that's uh, just uh, how the world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, and and we use that, we use that to the, to the advantage to open up the door and say, Hey, we have here a portfolio company that we believe is really has a product here that that would be a value add for you, for your company. Uh, uh, please give the try and, 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 and let them uh, explain what they're doing and, and, and uh, showcase product. We believe uh, that it would be good to do a pilot together. Yeah. That's what we do. Eh? From there on, they have to do it themselves. Yeah. Uh, but, but opening up the doors already make, make a big difference. Yeah. I it feels what the process. Yeah, I feel quite lucky that the startup that I started working for was uh, Sense Glove. They're also based in uh, Delft. We know um, them pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, Heis and Johannes, they um, they won't mind me saying this, but Johannes is more of the introvert and Heis is a bit more of the extrovert. And he very much took on the commercial role to start with. And when I was speaking to some of the initial investors, they were saying that, you know, having somebody with a commercial mindset who is still an engineer is one of the reasons they invested, like kind of, it was one of the big reasons they invested because they could see that one of them could go to, you know, bigger companies like Volkswagen, for example, hold a conversation and actually get across the main points that they're trying to, you know, the main pain points and the things they're trying to solve. Um, so that was always quite interesting to see uh, yeah. that dynamic because it's normally three, right? It's normally like the operations guy, the tech guy, and then the commercial guy. Isn't that the normal three that people look for? Uh, yeah, you, you have different ones, uh, but three uh, is typically uh, the, the, the amount I also see, uh, <laughs> the visionary and the hustler and the hustler, uh, yeah. hustler sorry. Yeah. the hacker and the hustler, sorry. Um, um, everybody has all those elements uh, in, in them. Eh? Uh, the only thing is that uh, with some are more the visionaries, some are more the hustlers, and and quite often, I would say founders have two of the three. Um, mm. And then you have to look for somebody who's complementary, in my opinion, to find the best founders team. Or you are a free founders. That's also possible, of course. Yeah, that's, that's um, like the perfect one, right? If, they, uh, if you find three and they're all, uh, um, well, they yeah, all specialize. Exactly. We, we even don't invest in single founder teams, to be honest. Yeah, uh, yeah, it doesn't surprise me, actually. I actually see a lot of these... Um, uh, these startup, um, what are they called? Like they, they advertise on LinkedIn for co-founderships. Have you seen this going around a little bit? Yes. I've I, seen I never really understood that. I, 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 yeah. I don't really get why you would apply for something like that or, so, or they would look for another co-founder like that. Can why you explain not? a little bit of the reasoning behind that you think? Um, no, I, I very much can imagine uh, that. This happens actually mm. uh, because you have a lot of people that uh, have uh, a good idea, uh, a good technology, and I, I really salute them if they say, "Hey, I, I am a good engineer, but I don't feel comfortable on the business side or on the commercial side. Mm. I'm not gonna, I gonna work on my on, on my proof technology, but I'm gonna find somebody that can uh, do that other job." So I, I do understand. The only thing is, uh, it is very important that you find the right founder. Uh, and, and, and typically, if, if, if again, in hindsight, <laughs> uh, uh, the best thing is, of course, uh, the, the, the subum, the ultimate one, is, is if you would find somebody who already had an exit, who did it successfully, and says, hey, um, I want to do this again, but I don't have mm -hmm. a technology because I'm a commercial guy or uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, because that person has the network already, uh, knows uh, uh, how it works, uh, has seen a lot of uh, hurdles already. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so it's very important that that if if you would come to me and say, "Hey, uh, I'm 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 a student, I'm an engineer, I have this great plan." And I'm looking for a co-founder and, and, and business administration student. Mm. Uh, you know, that's that that's that's hard. It's doable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but 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 uh, I would look for somebody who has already done it before. 
and maybe you have your first investor on board. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So I noticed in your um, your bio, you talk about system thinking a little bit, and that's a term I hadn't really heard too much about. What 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 is what is system thinking? Okay. Uh, well, what is it? I will explain that. But even yeah. more uh, for saving our planet, <laughs> it is very crucial crucial that we start uh, um, uh, focusing on system thinking. Um, because the world today is that that we uh, have been taught to to bring everything in silos and in models and in 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 little chunks that we can uh, that we can understand and control as human beings. The only thing is that planet Earth doesn't work like that. It's it's like one system that interacts with each other and. Uh, system thinking is 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 that you are developing a process or a product where you take into account um, all the interactions or rather in, uh, dependencies between every element. Yeah, and um, that's of course very complex eh? because uh, if you if you have like uh, two elements, there will be one connection and 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 maybe tops two. Uh, dependencies but if you make that already like 10 dots uh, it goes exponentially up in complexity yeah um, and therefore the human brain cannot handle that eh? so i understand that we thought we have to bring it back in in in, in small nudges uh, that we can control and i control this nudge you control that nudge what goes wrong there is that that we are not blind anymore at one point and that that the total system collapses and that's actually what's happening today mm. uh, so we have to go back to system thinking and and uh, to be honest i believe that is possible now because we have ai uh, and ai can help us with making the interdependencies and interactions uh, visible within seconds yeah and based on that we can uh, de develop better products but make better decisions uh, because we see the What's going? Where, where, which connections are making it better? Which connections are making it worse? Uh, um, but it's the only solution in my way uh, going forward to 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 create positive impact uh, on, on 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 the world. So very short system thinking is that you take every element which is is part of the system uh, and that you. Uh, look also at the interdependencies and the interactions between them, and then takes into account that that's only possible by having close uh, and short feedback loops. Because if 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 you change one thing, it has an effect on all the other can have an effect on all other interactions and interdependencies. You talk about positive impact quite a lot. That's like a, a recurring theme through your profile and through um, the business as well, and mm -hmm. obviously all of the portfolio companies. Where does that? Where did that come from exactly? So why 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 is that important to to you and the other founder uh, of Luma? Why why did you decide to invest in those types of businesses? Basically, um, well, we, when we started, you had like. Uh... The, the old fashioned VCs making money, yeah. <laughs> uh, Wolf of Wall Street, <laughs> and Gordon Gecko. And yeah. you had really the social impact uh, side and, and the philanthropy. Mm. Um, and, and we said, we, we, we do see that we want to invest in uh, organizations that have products that create positive impact so not only financial they need to be financially sustainable because if that's not the case there will also no impact there will be nothing anymore but also create an, an, a positive impact as well and that's a balance of course yeah? because uh, technology is nor good nor bad it's what you do with it and if mm. you uh, use an, an uh, AI engine uh, to work on the system thinking to solve the 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 the, the, the to, to to solve all the problems on the planet, then you would say, hey, that's that's very positive impact. But if you, you then know that it takes uh, uh, the 
30% of the world's energy sources, <laughs> then, you, <laughs> then maybe the positive impact uh, also has a negative effect. Yeah. Uh, so you, you need to also there uh, think 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 uh, in an impact way. Um, but but we see where the world end. Open up. Uh, well, you you don't open up the the newspaper anymore. But but you look at the <laughs> you look online at the news or you see the news in in on your mobile phone or your TV, and you see that that uh, we we just have been going the wrong way by focusing on short term and by focusing on on money, yeah, or shares yeah. Or, or, yeah. Or, or ownership. Um, and that's where we said, no, we, we have to change that. So we have to go from short term to long term again. And we have to go um, uh, that that money is not the only reason why you do things. You need to create impact uh, and then preferably a uh, positive impact. Yeah. That's the simple <laughs> reason for why we are focusing on that. And then we say, hey, we are impact driven. Uh, so yes, we want to make a good return for our, our uh, uh, investors and for the founders. And we believe they deserve that. Money is not dirty <laughs> in that sense, uh, uh, but we need to have that impact. Cool. Yeah, That's a, it's an interesting one because I feel well, money, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a strange one because some people think money is dirty in some respects um, and that anybody that's making lots of money is somehow a bad person. I think that's a, not a very good way to look at it, but some people do look at it like that. Yeah, money, money is a tool. It's, it really, money is a tool to, to, to do things. And, and, and as a result of good work, as a result of, 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 of uh, giving value at in what way, you can be remunerated and, uh, and rewarded with uh, money or shares that stand for particular money. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I do a lot of things without a financial transaction. I just help people and, 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 uh, one day I asked them help, you know, and that's, that's the same. Yeah, exactly the same. So let's talk about, uh, product market fit a little bit, because I think that's a, that's, that's a topic that a lot of founders, um, or a lot of people that think they have a great idea struggle with. Um, so in your opinion, you know, what are the top strategies for achieving like quality uh, product market fit? Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a boring uh, interview, uh, I think, because I'm going to say network again. <laughs> <laughs> but, this is, but this is good. This is a recurring theme. So yeah. people, who, if there's any founders listening, they need to be, uh, yeah. No, but, open up that and especially you make sure you have a good network because you need to have believers you need to have early adopters mm. and 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 you don't get those adopters in one go you need to build the relationship yeah so build on your uh, network and of course uh, you need to have a valid product and and uh, by the product market fit you need to have good product and you need to have market well market is is the network part make sure that people say hey i have trust in you and and uh, I'm happy to help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think you're sympathetic, etc. And believe in you. So that's one thing. On the other hand, uh, it's MVP, yeah? minimal viable product. Yeah. Uh, um, so don't build a go. Don't go to the market with a, with a product which is not ready yet. Yeah. Uh, and that means uh, for for technical people makes also make also sure that the ux ui or the design is good enough that 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 it is not a disturbance anymore uh that people cannot see through an ugly design or uh, uh, a an, an, an non-functional ux ui yeah um, on the other hand make sure that the the, the only the core elements uh, are are in and then go to the market and ask for feedback uh, and based on that, build build upon the product and and, and your features. Right? So, so I'm hearing make make your MVP uh, make the core work and make it work properly and make it efficient. And then once you've made it to that standard that it works and it's actually nice to work with, take it to the market and then get feedback from the people that you're trying to sell it to. Right? Yeah, and and as 
and take them along eh, uh, in that process uh, already from uh, already from early on, so that they they that they see the improvement, that they see the progress, that they see that you are seriously working on it, that they can maybe already give a bit of advice, and then uh, they they take a bit of ownership and are very much more likely to accept to be the first client. Interesting. Yeah. Cause I, I speak, I've spoken to a lot of different people uh, on the podcast about MVPs, people that are um, yeah, more developers, some engineers, people like that. And it's a common thing where people overcomplicate their MVP or stack it full of features that their client isn't even after because they haven't really done the research or actually exactly. they, they're just going to market with what they think they need instead exactly. of actually doing it the other way around. Right. Yeah. And, and you, again, here you, you will be surprised how many people are willing to help you. Uh, and, 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 and that's really just by, by asking them. And that's again, by building up your network, get a bit of a trusted person. And especially if you're young and, and the student, it's very easy to, to reach out to, to companies and say, Hey, uh, I have to do this or this uh, or that, or uh, for my studies, uh, it's okay if we have like half an hour together and you just ask. Yeah. I, I love that because, um, one of the things I love about, uh, Dutch universities is the, um, uh, like the, the is like the frat houses where it's like, you know, everybody in that house is basically like a family. And then after that, um, you know, if you can use your that network to get you somewhere eventually, um, that's one thing that we don't really have in the UK. Um, is that kind because of, that's quite American? The frat house kind of s sorority is that is that what yeah, you call it? yeah yeah. I, I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, were you part of uh, a sorority and and things like that? No, not no. Not, no. <laughs> I was not. I was an atypical student. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. I, but, um, I, I prefer the, to work. <laughs> yeah, the, the network side of things, um, it sounds like a bit of a boring one, but that's actually one of the reasons that I started the podcast uh, is to speak to multiple different founders, to speak to multiple different investors, just network really, because there's not very often in this fast-paced environment that we live in that you actually get a chance to sit down and speak with a guy like you, for, for example, who has got years of experience, you know, if we met at an actual networking event, we wouldn't probably spend an hour talking together, you know? Um, and having these different connections uh, opens a lot of different doors for people. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and that's also what I always would give as advice uh, to, to students. Yeah? Uh, I mean, if, if you're working for a long time, most likely you will get to know more people. Uh, but as a student, th this is why you have advisory boards and advisors. Yeah. Uh, mm. So you give like 1% or half a percent of your company away uh, to a professor that has a big network and that he opens because they are also in contact with a lot of people uh, so that they uh, are helping you open up that those, those first networks for you, uh, making introductions. And as they are trusted people, uh, you need to have the right ones, but most of them are the trusted people. Um, you will get in based on 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 their credibility, and that's also yeah. how we do it with with our startup. Based on my credibility, we get in at at uh, the ASMLs or the NXP of this world, and then they uh, have to deliver themselves, of course, as startup founders. But but they are in 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 the gate. Yeah, uh, which yeah. typically stays closed uh, for years uh, in that sense. Yeah, because that's, um, I don't know how familiar you are with uh, Dragon's Den. It's like a, a big show in the, the UK. It's obviously worldwide now, but a lot of the uh, founders invest with people that are in that industry, for example. So they'll invest, uh, they'll, they'll go for the investor that can open the most doors for them in their relevant industry. Exactly. And it doesn't make sense because those doors are normally closed for most people. Like we try and contact really big companies, for example, and you know, as a sales guy, they think, oh God, not another sales guy, you know, sending me a, a LinkedIn message. Um, so if you have an experienced guy that has a background, has a relationship with them, man, it makes it 10 yeah, times easier. The, the, the relationship is really the, 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 the most, most important thing. Really, yeah. uh, and, and and that's that's 
in in my case it's it's okay i was lucky i was in motorsport i was at the nice vip parties of me the one where i met the right people and if you have connections with those people other people want to be not because of you but because of that other people will be linked with you <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's very uh, honest to be and 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 that also I, i'm going to be honest um uh, from the moment on that 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 uh i had investor behind my name also a lot of doors opened yeah um, and, and and that's the same as from the moment on that you are becoming a professor, for instance, then that, that, that just, those things just open doors. And at one point, eh, the guy which I studied with is now a CEO of a big company. And that's at one point also another thing. It's not fair, but we just grow old and, and I have my path and they have a very corporate part. At one point, a CEO of a big company. Uh, okay, it's, it's, on my, it's on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, I know two of the president candidates in the USA now, you know, uh, how cool would it be that one of them will win? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, then imagine all the other, other doors that that would open just off the back of you knowing them, for example. Uh, exactly. And that's not that I did my best uh, to get to know them, but it's yeah. just, it just happened because we were at events networks yeah. uh, are in the same, uh, how do you say that? Uh, think tank. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's funny though, isn't it? When you have um, investor by your name, uh, how that kind of, Im it jumps you up in the business uh, uh, hierarchy uh, status uh, world um, because people think, or, or they, they want to get more from you, which is understandable because it is, it's because it's something that everybody wants to be. I think I really, I really believe it's, it's, it's something that most entrepreneurs eventually want to be is an investor. And that's why it's so like, you know, um, but yeah. that's, that's also the only reason why it's going up in ranking <laughs> because there is desire to be there. Uh, yeah. and, and, and again, and let's be honest, it's not, it's not for everybody. And, uh, I guess we are one of the few lucky ones to raise uh, funds and, yeah. and having raised funds, uh, successfully. Uh, many people will not succeed in that even successful entrepreneurs mm -hmm. with, with maybe higher access even than than we had yeah uh, what just, just just on that then like what what do you think is um the reason for that success then obviously i don't want you to brag too much but like <laughs> if you were going to say um is it is it you know the analysis that you do beforehand is it the coaching that you give like if you just had to have a hunch on why you think it's been successful what would it be why why well, it, it, uh, let me understand the question right. Why I believe that our fund is success, successful or why we were successful in fundraising? Uh, the first one, sorry. Okay. First one. Um, I, I, think, I think that uh, for us it was that we had a very clear vision uh, in, in what we wanted to do, what we want to invest in, that we could show that we have uh, um, the right experience in technology, for instance, to judge uh, um, and, and select the right uh, portfolio companies, um, that we had a, a great network already, um, and that people have, have uh, that we follow up, you know, and that we are trustworthy people, that when people ask us a question and we say, hey, tomorrow I'll give you the answer, that tomorrow you have to answer. Yeah. So it's 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 um, so it's, it's it's a bit of okay vision strategy, creating trust by following up uh, and persistence uh, because it's 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 fundraising is just as setting up a company. Yeah? It's like uh, you get a lot of no's and you uh, uh, you get more no's than you get yeses, uh, mm. and you have to thrive on the yeses and continue and have persistence. And sometimes you have hard days when you get 10 notes, but then you have to uh, like be happy with the, that, that one big yes and then the second yes. And at one point, you, you, you get the fear of missing out also there. Right? That, uh, yeah. Our first 5 million to raise was the hardest ever. Uh, and afterwards, you start also there that people are referring to each uh, us to other people. Like, hey, they have something. Uh, mm. Maybe you should... That means you're doing a good job. And then... And that was like uh, 2018, 19. Uh, now we have like, we have data, you know, <laughs> we have a track record. Uh, none of the companies failed. We have the first seven. 
that already with uh, the next uh, funding uh, stage, uh, the first two of them already go to the to, to the next step again. Whoa. Uh, we have 40% female founders. Uh, so diversity is is, yeah. is, is is going well on our side. So, in, in, and that helps in, in the next phase in that sense. Yeah, nice. And um, I saw they had something to do with uh, Nexus Impact Society. What what is that then? So I, I saw it was like uh, like philanthropy and things like that. What 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 what? How are you involved in that? Yeah, that's a secret society which I cannot talk about. <laughs> no. Serious. <laughs> 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 oh damn! Maybe I should have yeah, mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was joking. No, um, <laughs> it's been set up by uh, by uh, a, a group of Americans that, that amongst others. Millennials of the the one percent who have mm-hmm. said, "Hey, we, we we can have all those assets. We can have billions in the bank account, but if there's not a planet anymore to live in or live on, I have to say, uh, what's the point?" Uh, and they also have have then said, "Okay, based uh, on on the past, uh, they were mainly in philanthropy, but they said, hey, we we have to change that system. We have to uh, empower people uh, to to change.'" Uh, and therefore, they set up uh, and uh, brought together a, a, a group of uh, scientists, artists, impact investors, impact uh, entrepreneurs, um, and, and themselves high net worth to discuss about uh, the global challenges we have uh, yeah. based on the framework of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and uh, it's a very influential uh, group that that really sit together with the, in the White House uh, at the United Nations. Yeah. Uh, and and the the purpose is system change uh, to 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 uh, make sure that that we are focusing on the right elements in as as society uh, to solve uh, major issues in society. And those are per continent different, uh, but always coming back to the SDGs. Um, and 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 learn with each other. Uh, okay, what are best practices, and, how, and can we transfer best best practices from A to B? Uh, and 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 besides that, uh, also invest uh, in people and and be there when there's uh, uh, this big disasters happening in the world. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, on 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 the last few notes, then um, we'll take it back to probably something that's uh, more interesting for startup founders to listen to because i want to get your opinion on why um i think is it why is it that most startups fail so isn't it the statistic that most of them don't reach year five i think year five is like the big year that if you've reached year five you're doing extremely well what are the biggest mistakes most startups make that might not get them there in in just in your opinion yeah well the stanford professor says hey uh, uh, startups don't die by uh, homicide, but by suicide. Mm. And I truly believe that. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a harsh uh, saying, um, but uh, typically it's, it's internal uh, mistakes that, that cause a bankruptcy. Mm. Uh, so yes, you have, uh, 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 of course, you need to have uh, the right timing in product market uh, fit, of course. Um, but typically, it's it's cash flow. Uh, it is uh, in, uh, internal disalignment, disagreement uh, between uh, founders, mismatch with uh, first uh, key hires, uh, uh, so that the cash flow is too high, uh, that they are not focusing on sales fast enough, that they are not building the network fast enough. Uh, so that they say, hey, we have the product. Oh, we, are, we, we don't have money anymore to have a marketing plan or a sales plan or a hire a salesperson. Yeah. You see that, especially in tech companies, so often that, that there's just a misalignment. And, and also setting up a company is system thinking. Eh? You need to look at every department, every single element that is there and then see the inter- interdependencies between them. Uh, um, and, and, and that's very hard. And that's a continuous, continuous process, yeah. um, in my opinion. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I, I, I like to ask, uh, well, any other investor I ask uh, on that, well, I will be asking every other investor about that topic as well. But 
uh, we're coming up to the hour mark. Um, so what have you got planned um, in the next, you know, three to five years? If you think that, I'm sure you think that far ahead. <laughs> what have you guys got planned um, in the next three to five years? What's, 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 what's on the board? Um, well, we aim to uh, announce uh, officially, no, I have to do it here unofficially, <laughs> and <laughs> a 100 million uh, fund uh, in uh, March, April, um, which we then activate as of uh, second quarter of next year, um, where we're going to add uh, digital security to our focus and climate action, uh, climate tech in and for urbanized environments, in our case, uh, to our focus. Um, that will uh, be in five-year investment period. Uh, so we'll invest uh, five years in those kinds of startup scale-ups uh, within Europe. Um, so so that that's that's uh, on that end. Uh, on the other hand, we we will go into a divestment period uh, with our current fund. So we expect uh, to have nice exits uh, and great impact shown uh, in the next five years. Um, and I would prepare in the next five years, uh, hopefully, uh, an, another larger fund uh, to cover the total uh, of Europe um, and hope uh, that we have positive influence uh, on founders uh, and, and, and other investors and the ecosystem uh, uh, beyond it, like the European Union, uh, to do good things with the planet. That we see positive change. Nice. And two more things. And so... If there's a, a founder listening right now who thinks I definitely want Andy uh, and his investment group to invest in my company, what would be your advice to them uh, to see if they are the right fit or what could they potentially do to uh, be the right fit for you yeah. guys? Uh, well, I, 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 I always say never, never change your plans towards uh, an, an investor. Right? It should be a natural match in that sense. Uh, and otherwise, we'll find out uh, very, very fast. Um, now, if, if, if people say, hey, uh, I, I, uh, I have an AI data blockchain, IoT, VR, AR, or digital security company, and I have a solution for sustainable city health, well-being, quality education, or climate action, um, they can always reach out. We are very approachable, I would say, uh, during events or, or, or um, uh, summits, uh, and otherwise, you can always uh, send us a mail. Uh, or they can contact you, and uh, you have my email address, which I not give. <laughs> I'm now I'm now an agent to Andy for yeah. an, 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 I take ten percent as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, will make, I will not make the mistake to give my mobile number here. <laughs> Imagine that you go uh, viral. <laughs> uh, I won't do that. Yeah, no, but but um, we we are very approachable. You can always reach us, uh, and, and we are again. Uh, what, what I always say: Hey, you might need money. We need companies to invest in so don't don't they're, they're, eh? don't look at it that we are here and you are there we are equal it's an inter it's an exchange cool. perfect all right mate well thank you very much for your time i appreciate it you could have uh chosen to spend an hour doing anything you wanted and for some reason you decided to speak to me so thank you very much for that i uh, appreciate your time welcome um and where can people find you they can find you on linkedin obviously uh and uh the website as well right on the website uh, linkedin yeah so uh, that's, that's uh, very, very approachable, as you said. Cool. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, mate.